That's right, folks. We're going for it with an entirely unique, entirely painful challenge. I am going to beat the final boss of Stacklands without opening a single type of pack other than the very first one, and without acquiring any technology I think would fall beyond the scope of, uh, cavemen. Gardens? Hell no. Planks? What, what am I, a rocket scientist? Here are my options. Rocks, wood, sticks, rabbit crap. What really sucks about this is that I... I'm not going to be able to build any sheds. In Stacklands, you have a limited amount of, uh, room. You can only have a set number of cards in play. Guys? Cards. Resources? Cards. Food for your guys? Cards. You start the game with room for 20 things. At the end of each day, you have to sell off any more than that. But don't worry, you can build sheds to massively expand your storage space. All you need is to open the second pack and, oh, I can't do that. So yeah, I can never have any more than 20 things for the rest of the game, including all of my actionable characters, except money. That doesn't count because, well, you can't sell it. Anyways, all we can do is buy the beginner packs, process the contents to things that sell for more money, and then buy more packs, like a magic player who doesn't know how to buy singles. Eventually, a second guy shows up. Sweet! He can help us process random garbage into slightly less random, slightly less garbage items, like turning rocks and trees, worth zero, into wood and stones, worth one, and wood into sticks, worth two. That's right, boys and girls, we have entered a one to two coin stick-based economy. Get used to it, it's gonna be like that for the rest of the game. After hoarding enough berries, wood, and rocks, we managed to build a house. Yeah, I know, cavemen couldn't build houses. Challenge over. But really, you can't get more guys than two without building a house. And it's the first tech you unlock. And also, screw you, go try and beat the demon with sticks and rocks and two guys. I'll wait. Okay, are you back? Great. Our two guys get our two, uh, people? We're, work together to create a baby, which does nothing but eat a single food and wait to grow into yet more labor. The item cap hasn't really sunk in yet, and things go fine. Way too fine, actually. We're popping off. All this random trash sells for next to nothing, but that's better than literally nothing. We continue to create more guys and more wealth. Rabbits show up, and we use their poop to grow apples and berries, and turn them into meat to sell, because we can't figure out how fire works to cook it. Seriously, that's in the second pack for some reason. At some point, we get another pack from crafting something. It really sucks because we never want to open it, and our play space is getting hellishly crowded. Seriously, it is awful having this much junk on the screen. The stacks of money are flying everywhere, and every time enemies show up, or we have to... Mm, cull the rabbit population, the combat makes all of them clip into one another, shooting across the screen being a general pain in the ass. Once I got to five villagers, I sold my house for more space, but also because I didn't need any more dudes. Five is a lot to keep fed on just berries and apples as it is. From there, it was just an exercise in repetitive tendon strain as I struggled to organize all of this money, keep my villagers working, and keep the rabbit population down. Because you can't sell livestock, and they would have to stay with me from day to day if they lived, despite not being all that valuable. Speaking of valuables... 56 minutes into the run, we have the stroke of luck we needed, the traveling cart event. You see, we don't get to, like, run into the final boss or something like that. We have to build an incredibly expensive, time-consuming building to summon him. It takes a golden goblet and a temple, which takes five planks, five bricks, three iron bars, three villagers, and then 180 seconds to build. You my astute viewer, can probably figure out the problem with this. That's right! My idiots are too stupid to build planks, bricks, or iron. Which brings us back to the run's best friend, the traveling cart. For five gold, we get to spin the gotcha. All kinds of crap can come out, from apples and milk to, say, planks, bricks, iron, and the golden goblet. For a full 25 minutes, I drag gold onto the cart sort the crap that pops out, and assemble what I need to build the temple. We have all the stuff we need, eventually, and I sell back the stuff we can't use. Extra planks, bricks, and iron, mostly. And then begins phase two of our quest, the bulk up. 
See, I've done this challenge before, like four times for some reason. I quite enjoy this game, to be honest. The little nerds running around, the neuron activation of opening packs of trading cards. But the problem I ran into every time is that I just didn't put enough of a beat down into the demon before he stunlocks my guys and kills them all. I tried with 10 villagers armed with what I could scavenge. I tried with 12 armed with stuff from the cart. This time, I think I'll stop at like 18 or 20. But first, I'll move a stack of gold around, bumping into other things and causing so many objects to interact and move that the game crashes. Thank God for autosaves at the start of each day. I'm going to spare you the next painful two hours of game time with a well-placed time lapse. First thing first, building houses. I think I get up to three at one point, and every villager not actively picking berries to feed our horde is in a house, uh, making more villagers. Or making spears or clubs. Babies become men. Men become warriors. Warriors become women to make babies. I've never had this many people in Stacklands, and let me tell you, it's kind of a pain in the ass. With 18 of our 20 cards taken up by guys, we are not able to hold over any food between days. This means every day we produce as many berries as possible and as many weapons as we need, equipping our guys so the game doesn't see all of that stuff on the board and make us delete it. The houses are gone. The berries are gone. Everything is gone except our sweaty 18 dude pile bulked off and pissed off at the horrible living conditions they've been forced to endure for days now. I don't want to imagine the BM situation of 18 Conan the Barbarian cosplayers eating nothing but berries for four days. Eventually, enemies show up. This is a problem, not because they're hard, they are not, but because it makes our coin stacks freak the F out and fly all over the place. We have no control over our enemies, so unlike the rabbits, we can't pick our fights or pick them up and drag them out of the way. When they decide to bump into 270 coins worth of game objects, well, the engine is just going to have to square up and take it. Thankfully, the game doesn't crash again. We keep making berries to feed ourselves and prepare to fight the demon. With all hands on the battlefield, we aren't going to be able to have berries for long, so we need to start the fight at the beginning of the day, when we have as much time as possible before needing to eat again. Why did- uh, that's right, I haven't said why. Because if your guys don't eat, they instantly die. Oh wait, never mind, I totally don't do that, summoning the demon in the last 25% of a day. Why? When your guys eat, they regain some health, and will probably need that. Not gonna lie, dragging 18 guys onto the final boss felt fantastic. Not being able to see jack shit while I scrambled to get random coins out of the way, uh, not so much. The demon has a lot of health. 299 to be exact. He has a 10% chance to attack and stun lock every enemy and... Oh, oh, never mind, he totally didn't do any of that, he just ate shit. Seriously. I have never had him perform that poorly. He did not make a single stun attack, instead opting to stand around and get hit by all of my warriors and militia. My warriors were all using basic clubs, caveman rules after all, and my militia were using bone spears. I know I technically didn't have the recipe for bone spears, but come on, bone plus spear is like as caveman as it gets. We beat up the demon, the traveling cart randomly showed up so I could clear all of the BS off the screen and replace it with slightly smaller piles of expensive BS. I'd try and edit this down into some kind of like climactic moment where I barely squeezed by, but in reality it was just a thorough stomping the whole time. The only corpse I got this entire run came out of a chest I bought from a traveling cart. It made me pissed because it can't be sold and it counts as a card, reducing my max from 20 to 19 with absolutely no hope of ever getting rid of it. I also got another golden goblet. Wow, I could fight this last boss twice if I wanted to finish turning my irritated wrist into a lifelong injury. Instead, we just kind of finished off the demon. Guy was a wuss, no chance. I got cute with it at the end, thinking I could use the planks and stuff that I already had to build boats and access the post-demon content. This was a terrible idea. I locked myself in to the night with way too many items, and I also couldn't pull my guys out of the boat so I couldn't sell the boats. I softlocked the whole game. And with that, we discovered that yes, through sheer force of will and numbers advantage, it is very possible to beat the demon in Stacklands as a caveman. I wouldn't recommend it though. I started to get serious carpal tunnel pains like an hour and a half in, with two hours left to go. I, I think I'd rather beat a 100 hour JRPG on a fucking 3DS than do this shit again. 
I'll still play Stacklands though, that game slaps. Maybe I'll do the DLC on here someday. With that, thanks for watching. I've been gone a bit. I got a new job, which is great for my wallet, but not super awesome for long form content creation. You know the standard YouTube post video shakedown, so bell, subscribe, all that. It really does help a lot with the algorithm, and I will see you guys later. Mm -hmm.